behind me, 2008 Mini Cooper S, we're going to be replacing the rear brake pads and rotors. Let's get started. First thing we want to do is jack the vehicle up, put it on jack stands, and we'll pull our tire off. If you have a hubcap, take a flat bladed screwdriver, pop it in between the cap and the rim, just give it a tug, we'll kind of go around. Oop. We have two 13 millimeter bolts to pull our caliper off. And if this starts spinning on you, you can hold on to it with a pair of pliers or a 15 millimeter open end. Before we pull our caliper all the way off, we have a brake pad wear sensor that we want to take off. This is only on one side, so the other side won't have it, but this side will just pop off. There's a little retainer on this back side. So pop that up, it releases our wire, and then we should be able to just kind of pull up. Let me get a little flat screwdriver. And we'll pull up on it. There we go. And it just slides in like that. So nice and gentle, you don't want to torque too much because this 90 degree angle, you don't want to break it right here on this corner. So just a little wiggle, it should come right out. Now we'll move this aside in a safe place. Now we can slide out our caliper. Just using the flat screwdriver just to kind of pry a little on it. There we go. And we'll just set that aside. It can just dangle on its own for now. Then we can pull our pads out now or later. It's up to you, doesn't really matter. You just push them out. Kind of stuck in there. I'm gonna use a little hammer to hit on the back of my screwdriver. There we go. And we'll pop this side out. Nice. Now if your brake pads came with new hardware, we could pop the hardware out and then install new hardware. For some reason, my brake pad did not come with new hardware. So you just have to look at your hardware because this is a stainless steel, depending on where you live, these can be reusable. So just keep that in mind. Another thing I like to do while the bracket is still on is re-grease my slide pins. So we'll just pop these out, wipe them off real good. Then we'll apply caliper grease. Make sure that it's caliper grease and not just a normal petroleum based grease. This is a silicone paste. All right, slide it back on. Do that to the bottom. The same thing, just wipe it off real good. Apply your grease and then we'll slide that in. Perfect. Now to get our caliper bracket off, there are two 16 millimeter bolts from the back side. There we go, nothing to it. Let me reposition you and we'll get our rotor off. Right here we have a little retainer for our rotor and that is a T50. You need to fit nice and snug. And I like using the impact driver. Sometimes these like to stick in there. So impact driver, we can hold one side with our knee but really what I probably should have done was kept the caliper on and that friction would help prevent it from spinning. But got a little ahead of myself, no big deal. I can do it this way. Whew. Well, that's all there is to it. I'm gonna keep whacking on it and I'll show you when I got it. If I can't get it with the impact, then we'll try a different method. All right, got it. Just took a minute of beating on it, but it did come off, so sweet. This comes off. So now we want to clean off our hub really good. For that, I like using a drill with a wire brush. Once we got the initial rust off, we're just going to look for any high spots. We're going to scrape that down with a flat screwdriver. A lot of times it's just rotor material that's left behind. Just want a nice flat surface. There, it all came off and I'll just buzz it one more time. Nice, that looks really good. Now we're gonna take our new rotor and clean it off with some brake clean. Put a protective coating on here for storage. You just wanna get that coating off. Wipe it real good. All right, perfect. Now we're gonna take our rotor retaining bolt. We're just gonna put a little anti-seize on it and then just rub it around. That'll help it come off easier in the future. There we go. Then we'll take our rotor, and just put it on, line it up, get this started. Now this does not need to be too tight. I'll let you use your judgment, but just good and snug. It's not going out anywhere. Even if it does back out, you have your rim here preventing it from falling all the way out. So as long as it's good and snug, that's all we need. Now let's push back in our caliper piston. It can be a little tricky. Let me show you. Let me show you up close. These caliper pistons are notched. So it requires a special tool to both twist that piston while it's being pushed in. A lot of times you can rent that tool from the auto parts store if you don't already own one, but I'll also put a link in the description for a tool set that has exactly what you need. Let me set you up and we'll work on that. This is what the tool that I have looks like. It has a plate that we slide on, just like that. 
And then we have an adapter here. It has four little protrusions. That goes on like this. We'll slide it in and we'll tighten it up by hand. There we go, just to get it started. And then what I like to do, because if we try to turn this, it just wants to move around. So what I like to do is take an S hook for holding the caliper, just put it in where the bolt hole goes and then attach it to somewhere convenient. And now that holds it in place. I can just twist it and that's it. So hopefully you can see it in the camera. Sometimes I need a little extra help. So I take a wrench and then just put that on my tool as well. That gives me a little extra support. And just keep twisting and it'll go in. You don't have to go too fast. Sometimes slower is better. All right, and we are just about, there we go, bottomed out. And we'll back the tool off. There we go. And that'll come out, perfect. Now let me show you a little closer. You see the caliper piston is pushed all the way in. I had that S hook on the bottom one, and then I just had it kind of over here hooked to the frame a little, and that held it in place. Now on the other side, I believe I had it the opposite just because of the way it wanted to twist. On the other side, I had it in the top and then found a spot up here to hook it to on the other side. That's the only trick that I know to make this easier. Otherwise, you're trying to hold it while it's spinning on you. All right, that's it. Let's put our caliper bracket back on and we can put our brake pads in. We already took care of prepping our bracket. Let's just slide that in, get the bolts in. Sometimes it's easiest to use the socket instead of your fingers to spin it. And the information I have says 48 foot pounds. Then we can put our pads on. The deepest notched one, that goes in the back. That notches for our brake pad wear center. So I'll go ahead and just put it in the back. There we go. And then we'll put in the front. Nice. Now our caliper should slide over it. There we go. Bolts back in. Snug those down. Now these are torqued between 23 and 28 foot pounds, so I have it set to 25. Uh, this is gonna spin, so I'm just gonna hold it with a pair of pliers. There we go. Perfect. And we can throw our pad wear sensor in. Should just drop right in and kind of lock. There we go. I heard a snap. And then we'll lock this wire retainer in. There we go. Okay, perfect. That's it. What I like to do before going to the other side is pumping up the brake pedal. That way I don't forget before I take it on test drive, my brakes are already pumped up and ready to go. If you're doing the other side, it's done very similar to this. You just won't have a brake pad sensor, but everything else should be the same. All right, that is it. Now we want to take the vehicle for a good test drive. We want to burnish or break in our new brakes. How we do that is we take the vehicle up to about 30, 35 miles an hour. Then we want to come to a good solid stop. Now we don't want to lock the brakes, but we do want to feel it. Nice, good, solid stop. Then we'll let off the brakes, accelerate again, 30, 35 miles an hour, and do that again. Nice, solid stop. And we'll repeat that for about four or five times. And then your new brakes are all set. I'll have a link in the description for all the parts and tools used in this repair. And if you need to do your front brakes, go ahead and click this video and we'll replace those together. Thanks for watching.